Okay, so I have three problems for you um, from the second haiku sheet, uh, 2012, and then there's a couple problems from 2013. Uh, the first question, again, consult the table for the 2012 graphing calculator one. The table will tell you that W prime of 12, you have to approximate between 9 and 15 and just essentially find the slope. So use the table to plug in the values and you should get the answer 1.016 or 1.017 and the units are important, degrees Fahrenheit over minutes. Question B, do not use the trapezoid rule or rectangle approximation. Again, you have to use the table. But the first thing to note right here is the integral from 0 to 20 of w prime t dt is w of the upper limit minus w of the lower limit. So just consulting your, your chart will give you that there's a 16 degree Fahrenheit change over the 20 minutes. Now for part C, you do have to use LRAM, but it's also incorporating with an average value. So the key with LRAM here is that the widths of the rectangles in parentheses are different. And again, consult your table. And then starting with the left end point, the temperature starts at 55 and then you go to 67.9. But then whatever answer you get in the parentheses, you multiply it by 1 over 20 because it's the average value. What's inside the parentheses would be the sum of all of the degrees, which really doesn't make too much sense. The average temperature is 60.790. And that is an under approximation or an underestimate because if you look at the graph, the, 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 the y values keep increasing. So you're going to get, for the most part, a concave up graph where the LRAM rectangles will be under the curve, thus an under approximation. And question D is really a straight calculator question. I know that at time 20, the temperature is 71 degrees the change of temperature from time 20 to 25 would be an integral, which you plug in. You plug in W prime T, whatever that special function is, and um, it's, in, it's in the question. And if you type it all out, you get a temperature of 73.043 because the change of temperature is like 2.04 degrees. That's a good question. This, is, this was a good question from 2012, and I think my kids did all right with it. I felt the next question was harder, and that is the 2013 question um, about the gravel. I thought, I remember seven years ago, the kids said this was a really hard problem. But it's about the fundamental theorem, and it's about integration. So the first question says, you know, what is g prime of 5? But they give you g prime of t in the question, and the units of g prime of t, excuse me, the units of g of t are tons per hour, so the units of G prime would be tons per hour squared. And that was worth a point at a 9, so I would feel that a lot of people probably got that wrong. I would type in G of T under Y sub 1, and then you're essentially using math 8 to get the answer negative 24.587 or 588. Remember, you just type in either number. Don't write 587 with parentheses 8. Write 587 or write 588. And then explain yourself for the point. The rate of gravel arriving at the plant is going to be decreasing because the sign is negative at time 5. Question B is a very straightforward question. And again, that's the question you want to get right. The amount of unprocessed gravel in the 8 hours is going to be the integral from 0 to 8 of the function. And again, that's a math 9 question. You have to write the integral in that you're using. Don't forget your units. In this case, it's tons. Question C, uh, looking at your table, time 5, the amount of gravel you know, in the unprocessed is 98.140 or 141. And if you look at the question, they say that if it's less than 100, it would be decreasing at that instant. So again, you have to look at the question, and, and that is in the haiku and refer to that when you're at, you know. It's like you have to use each part of the question to get your answers here. And I thought question D was a really hard question. And I know statistically that was a question not a lot of people in the country got correct. But it's a fundamental theorem question. So understand that 
you have to set up some other function, whether it's y of t, the amount, a of t, p of t, whatever you want to write. It's the original amount, 500, plus the integral from 0 to any time of the gravel minus the 100 tons that's processed each, each hour. And again, if you don't write this integral, you're just not going to get this question right. But if you get the other parts right, that's, that's sufficient. Uh, the derivative is g, of, is g of t minus 100. The derivative of 500 is 0. And then the derivative of this integral is substituting the t into the x here. But you keep the 100. It, it, you have to keep that in mind. That's in, involved in the integral, so that has to stay there. And where does g of t minus 100 equal 0? Because you're trying to find a maximum, so you're setting the derivative equal to 0. You get this irrational number, 4.92, whatever. Um, and but, but the key is, is that you might think that's the only answer, but you also have to test the endpoints to get full credit. So by testing the whole um, endpoints, Again, but at time zero, there's 500. That's what's given in the question. I would put 4.9238 into this integral and type this out. And if you type this out, you get uh, 100, uh, 635 point whatever. And then if you put 8 in here for t, so put the 8 in for the t, and just type it out, you would get 525.551. So what they're saying is, at this particular time, you do have this amount of tons. So that's a really hard question, quite honestly. So I just wanted to show you how it was done. I thought the last question of the day was pretty straightforward. We've spent a lot of time with these types of questions. 2013 Graphing Calculator 2 gives you a velocity equation, and they give you initial position or whatever. So question A basically says, when is the speed to? So keep in mind that the velocity, speed is the absolute value of velocity, so you have to set the velocity equal to 2 and negative 2. And you are going to get two separate answers, so keep that in mind. Okay? A lot of people probably only found one answer because they forgot to set the velocity equal to negative 2 also. And again, your calculator would do that. I would just graph the velocity graph on my calculator and I would essentially graph the two lines, y equals 2 and y equals negative 2. Question B, again, is a fundamental theorem question, but the position function is its initial position 10 plus the integral from 0 to any time of a velocity equation. So, again, you have to write that out to get full credit, and that's what makes this problem probably a little bit tricky. And now you just substitute to, time, to see what time 5 is. And you should be able to type that out and get an answer. Uh, again, you can follow along as you're on your own speed or rewind, etc. Question C, um, you know, the velocity graph should be on your calculator. Where does the particle change direction? Well, you're looking to see where the graph is zero. And then those are the two answers which you would round or truncate to three places. And then your explanation, remember, you can't draw a velocity graph and just have arrows saying it's above to below or below to above. Um, just keep in mind, you probably have to uh, explain that the velocity graph is negative at this time interval and positive just after or positive just before, negative after, to explain that the velocity changes its sign, therefore it's changing direction. So you do have to write something out. Whether it's one sentence or a good phrase, something that the grader is going to look at and say, okay, they understand the question. And question D, we've spent a lot of time on. At time four, uh, I know that the velocity is negative. I can use my calculator. And at time four, the acceleration is also negative. And, and you can even write what it is, the numerical values. But the SIGN is the key. Same signs for velocity and acceleration imply that the particle is speeding up. The AP likes to use the word increasing, but they would accept speeding up. So just keep that in mind. Um, I thought this was a pretty straightforward question. The other two questions which I'm going to show you tomorrow are both from the uh, 2012 test. So 2012 uh, AB2, uh, 
AB4 and AB5, and I'll show you that tomorrow.